The guidelines state that parishes like families need to exercise and demonstrate some flexibility when ministering to those with disability. So this starts with and promotes an atmosphere of respect and welcome. Neil and Denise, have you come across situations like this before in your work and what strategies would you recommend to address it? For example, to accommodate individual needs and circumstances. So in my unit, we often don't know where the couple might be coming in for some relationship education or support. And we don't know whether or not they have a disability or not. So it's always a surprise. Um, but we have a belief that whoever comes has the right to the service. We've got to accommodate the differences uh, to make that accessible for them. Mm -hmm. So um, I could get, you know, so we had a recently a couple with an intellectual disability we didn't know, um, and um, they ended up getting, you know, of course a fantastic service from us. But we treated them in the same way we did other couples, except we had to make allowances. So for example, we realised that we needed the permission to talk to the parents about a particular situation. So we asked the couple, as we would in any, any any other couple, not that we need to speak to other couples' parents, but in this case we did. <coughs> but if we needed permission to talk to somebody else, and we asked, and they said yes, and um, they agreed, and the advantage to us was that we were able to then get them some extra help that they needed um, for support so that they could have the sort of relationship that they were dreaming of, like every couple mm -hmm. dreams of, of having a lovely couple relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and it took more work, it took more time, it cost us money in terms of time, mm. but that's the way it is and that's the way it should be mm. and there's no difference. Mm. Um, not too long ago we had a, a group of couples uh, for a, a, two, a day and a half program and I was actually involved in this program and we sort of noticed fairly early on one man had some unusual behaviour and we came to the decision that he actually uh, was autistic uh, and uh, being in a group was probably not the best choice for him. Mm. But however, they were there as a couple, they had the same right. So when he needed to get up and walk up and down and that, we just accommodated that. And what we did was, and the way we responded helped the rest of the group feel safe. Mm -hmm. and they had a fantastic, fantastic uh, you know, ex you know, experience mm -hmm. in that program. So yeah, that, I think that's the way. We just say, well, it's like everybody else. So we just, we are the ones that have to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my role within St John of God Healthcare is to drive or coordinate the Disability Access and Inclusion Plan. And a part of that plan is to create an environment where people with disability um, have the confidence to come and, and uh, 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 apply for vacant positions. Um, when this was first introduced to St John of God Healthcare, there was a lot of hesitation around. Um, from the managers and, and other caregivers who would end up working with someone with a disability that it was a risk, an occupational health and safety risk, that they're sick aren't they, aren't they, you know, they're not going to be at work and, and, um, and we had to work through that because it's founded on fear, not founded on reality. Mm -hmm. um, we know how much uh, work means to us, how we attain and maintain a sense of worth because we come to work and we contribute. People with disability has told us that you know they they um, they live with a double whammy. They have a disability and they're unemployed. But have also said to us that um, it isn't necessarily their disability that prevents them from access to interview. And so we have processes and systems to ensure that people with disability get preferential um, opportunities in, in getting in to that environment, that interview environment, and spooking themselves and selling themselves. And as a result of this process this, uh, th that we've, um, we've adopted, there are considerably more people with disability working for us and being successful and contributing. I'll share with you one, one story from someone in Perth who um, we uh, uh, co-hosted a conference where we looked at people with disability accessing um, employment and um, her name is Karen and uh, Karen was asked a simple question by the host what does it mean Karen for you to have um, found a place to work and Karen said as a result of working in St John of God Healthcare um, I have grown in confidence to allow myself to fall in love now 
St. Onegod Healthcare is not a dating agency. <laughs> 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 um, yet, as a result of finding a place of belonging, as a result of finding a place where she could contribute, she made herself vulnerable to the other wonderful things that life has to offer. Now you translate that to a parish where it is full of vulnerable people seeking a place to belong, mm -hmm. seeking a place to contribute. And yet, the space is there. Gee, don't we know how much space is there in our, in, in our, in our parishes? And yet, the, 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 the invitation to belong I feel isn't as strong as it should be because again it's possibly based on fear. Okay. Um, if I may go on a little bit more. There's a, a wonderful man called John Swinton who's a Presbyterian minister in Aberdeen and he writes wonderful books on uh, the spiritual life of people with intellectual disability and has this wonderful phrase, to belong I need to be missed. And I use that quite a lot in, in my work and I speak like this about it. But in my work I travel around Australia quite a bit and once my wife and my children get over the euphoria of dad not being around, <laughs> <laughs> they begin to miss me. Why? Because I belong. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at our workplaces. Let look, let's look at our parish congregations. Where are the people with disability? If they're not there, are we sending out a strong and eloquent message that you're not here because you don't belong? That's the danger that we have. And for those people with cognitive impairment, those people who cannot communicate for one reason or another, they have even more to offer us, not just by their presence, but by their worth. For people who struggle to make sense of what it is to have a brother or a sister or mother or father or a child, with intellectual disability or other disabilities. The struggle that they experience cannot be left as it's their business alone. This is where the faith community is supposed to step in. This is where the faith community should be that support. It should be the, the welcoming space. And through the sacraments, that's where this tremendous opportunity of, of new birth, of new understanding, of new belonging and togetherness. And sometimes I think it isn't about an intellectual understanding of what the sacraments is all about. If a person with a cognitive impairment is welcomed by the parish, and the parish themselves see their value and their worth, and they can see by the very behaviour of that individual that they feel they belong, that they're responding to the invitation of Christ through the parish, that in itself is catechesis enough mm -hmm. to confirm that this person is ready to receive the sacraments. Mm -hmm. For St. John of God Healthcare, um, it, it, it's a continual growth around understanding what it means to invite and to support people with disability, to belong within the work environment. And it's one that we, we, uh, we purposefully seek to engage more and more so that we can become the organisation that we say we are, a ministry of the church, not just a business within the church. <laughs>